Good day and welcome to our latest electric vehicle project, a 1991 all-electric Miata. It's got a 9-inch DC motor and it's mated to its manual transmission. It works fine, there's no clutch, and uh, third gear works fine around town, plenty of pickup and acceleration. And then when you get above 45-50 mile an hour, take your foot off the accelerator and just slip it into fourth gear. Under the hood, things are a little bit cleaner with the engine removed. Front and center is a Curtis 500 amp controller mounted to an aluminum heat sink. And underneath there is a small fan that turns on every time you turn the ignition on. Underneath the shelf is a 9 inch DC motor mated to the transmission. And we retain the alternator which runs off the front shaft of the DC motor and keeps the 12 volt battery charged. There's 10 Thunder Sky batteries up front, an additional 30 behind the rear seat where the gas tank used to be, and then 8 more inside the spare tire well for a total of 48 cells. The car's got excellent balance, slightly better than the stock car, and it's actually just lighter than the uh, stock car, 15 pounds lighter, and the weight distribution uh, move back a little bit. We've got 53% on the rear wheels and 47% of the weight on the front wheels. So the car handles quite well. We added a vacuum pump for the power braking system and we also had to replace the booster module as well. There's two contactors for additional safety. One contactor engages when you turn the key on. The second one engages every time the accelerator is pressed. So if you're in an accident and um, that second contactor will open up adding a little extra level of safety. There's two shunts. One measuring the battery side current and one ma measuring the motor side current. We've got two fuses, one in the front and one in the rear pack. And then for monitoring, we've got the blue view. The blue view connects into um, your battery, um, uh, magnetic pickup for your um, motor. So it gives you your voltage, your current, attack reading, and a state of charge. And it all runs through the rear camera input on the radio we installed inside. As you can see, we made sure that the batteries, uh, there's quick disconnects, Anderson disconnects on each side of the battery, and the battery is covered with uh, Eastman Spectar, so people can see, but cannot touch. Uh, there's a BMS system that we installed that shunts at 3.7 volts, and it alarms at 3.8 volts shutting off the charger if it hasn't already shut off naturally. And it also has a volt voltage alarm at 2.7 volts. So when you start getting that uh, low voltage alarm as you accelerate, you know you're about out of power. Inside the car, we've got your normal Miata gauges as well as a voltage gauge, an amp gauge, and a battery indicator gauge. And in addition, we've got the blue view here and this blue view shows you your battery voltage, the battery current, uh, motor RPM, and the battery capacity. Kind of a nice little setup for the uh, for instrumentation, all in one nice package with the radio. Here where you'd normally fill up with gas, we added a standard 110 volt 15 amp plug to power the 1500 watt charger. Little on the small side, but it will fully recharge the car overnight. Takes about 10 hours from completely empty to full. In addition, you see the last eight cells down in the uh, spare tire well with a can of Fixaflame. While it impinges a little bit on the trunk, it's still larger than what you have in the Tesla Roadster. And there you can see a little bit um, the batteries, the 30 batteries that are behind the rear seat. 
and then there's the charger tucked off into the side. I'll now close with a couple still pictures. Here's a shot of me bottom balancing the batteries, trying to get them all at an even and low state of charge before we installed them back in the Miata. The second shot is a picture of the main battery pack, which is 30 cells right behind the rear seats. Uh, it was covered up with carpet, so it was hard to get a good shot. Overall, the car is performing very well. The only thing I would do different if I had it over to do again is the 90 amp hour cells have too great of a voltage sag under hard acceleration. With um, CALB uh, 120 amp hour cells would be absolutely perfect for a car like this and give you a good 60 miles of range. Hope you enjoyed it. Contact me if you have any questions. Thank you.